There was a heel turn on last night's Raw, also a new WWE faction was revealed, and a SummerSlam title match has also been confirmed. It's all in the wrestling news. Hello everyone, it's Jack and Ross with the Tuesday morning wrestling news. Lots of stuff to talk about on last night's Raw. So much stuff to talk about from last night's Raw, including a son going against his father. Oh, I see what you mean, yes, because yes. last night after Sheamus versus Bronson Reed, we saw Bronson try to attack Sheamus after the bell, but then his son, mm -hmm. as you say, Pete Dunne, made the save, and then they went for a handshake, uh, and then Pete Dunne refused the handshake, building off what we saw last week. He's annoyed with the way Sheamus left the brawling brutes, but not just that, because then when Sheamus' back was turned, Pete Dunne attacked him as well, and then just watched from the entrance ramp as Bronson Reed hit the tsunami on Sheamus. Yeah, Pete went up the entrance ramp, thought about it, went back in the ring, and then whistle wazzle Seamus here. We don't know what's going on. The tsunami was brutal after the bell from Bronson Reed. I was a bit shocked to see Seamus get the win over Bronson Reed because Bronson has been relatively booked strong, I think, on Raw since he's been on there. Mm -hmm. Seamus got a new theme, I guess, as well as is in the news as well. All oh, right. Yeah, it's more like the old Celtic Warrior one, you know, the, the ones with the do 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 do. Oh, but he just brought back um, too, too many, many lines. lines. Yeah, yeah. Oh. it's gone away again. So he's got a new one of them. Um, but this is good what they're doing here, I think, because Pete never forgets. No one in Triple H's Dury ever forgets what happened years ago. Yeah. There's continuity, isn't mm. there? And the wrestlers, as we've, as you recently criticised, but nowadays they seem to watch the show more yes. and know what's going on. Um, this comes in the aftermath, obviously, of learning about Tyler Bates' injury. Him and Pete had started teaming together as the new Catch Republic. And I think this is quite a good sign that they're not just going to kind of let Pete fall by the wayside while Tyler Bates out. They're going to do something with him. And this heel turn looks like it could lead to a bit of a push as well. Yeah, SummerSlam match, surely. One of the undercard matches, you would assume. Well, Pete versus Sheamus. Yeah. Yeah, it'll be good. Banger. So. After Banger. Um, elsewhere on Raw, a new faction was revealed, and it's the one that we've all been kind of speculating. Uh, Chad Gable called out Bo Dallas after se several weeks of being taunted and targeted by the Wyatt Six. And this led to Bo Dallas coming out. First time I think we've seen him in the actual arena. Yeah. Like, not in as his Bo, disguise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. as Bo. Uh, and then he was attacked by Chad Gable and his new teammates, the Creed brothers. This comes after we've seen them talking in the background of segments, even talking to each other in the foreground of some backstage yeah. segments as well. Um, and yeah, the New Look Alpha Academy were approached by the Wyatt Six and all ran away before the Bo Dallas family could get to them. Good so, stuff. Yeah, they get Bo Dallas on his arse and then Bo Dallas starts laughing like one Bray Wyatt would do way back in the day. And then Chad's like, what are you laughing for? And then Bo Dallas says to Chad Gable, like Uncle Howdy's been saying to Bo Dallas, aha, there you are. Mm. And that's what brings out the Wyatt Six. I guess this is their first in-ring appearance because they made it to the ring and all posed and whatnot. I know the, the, the Creed brothers and uh, Chad all took a powder, mm -hmm. as I like to say in the wrestling, and no actual altercation happened. But it was on the anniversary of The Fiend's first Raw in-ring appearance. Oh as well. Oh, right. That was in 2019. This happened in 2024. Five years apart, but on the same date. Oh, very good yes. stuff. Um, I'm not sure about this just because presumably the two sides are going to clash maybe at SummerSlam. But I don't know if either are in a position where I want them to lose the match. No. Mm. It is very early in both the runs to be getting a conclusive loss. Mm. And you would assume it's going to be Chad. Yeah, you would, yeah. <laughs> mm. I guess if anyone can take a loss, it's Chad. Yeah. Yeah, hopefully. The same can be said of the Creeds as well. Uh, Eric Rowan contributed to these video messages we've been seeing from members of the Wyatt Six. Well, mainly Bo Dallas and his alter ego, Uncle Howdy. But now Eric Rowan's got involved as well and uh, talked a bit about, I guess like his reasoning for being in the group and everything. Yeah, he goes on to say that the last few years have been hard and he talks about uh, how he used to have a family before but then one day the whole world changed and then he starts getting in sort of tears speaking about his brothers obviously referencing Bray Wyatt and Luke Harper, mm -hmm. uh, Brody Lee from way back in the day. Uh, then he was handed a sheep mask um, and it just... It's it's another. Well, I assume we're going to get one of these per week now for each of the white six members. It's just another. It's another good. We're still setting the table. It's yeah. still going along well. And I like because sometimes with factions, especially ones that feature people from all different areas of the card, some former stars or whatever, this is a real mismatch. But I like that where no, no one's getting lost in the shuffle. By the looks of it, we're going to learn a reason for each one being in the group. And yeah. I think that's a good thing as well. I think this tape got dropped off at the Pat McAfee show I saw on Twitter last night. Oh. I think it was this tape. A tape got dropped off to. Pat McAfee on his uh, on his not wrestling show. Well, you can't be dropping off to Michael Cole anymore because he's yeeting too hard. <laughs> He'll just send it flying. Well, have you seen him? Yeah. He's having a great time. Yeah. Uh, a SummerSlam match was teased last night as well. Drew McIntyre returned from his suspension and went on a tirade about CM Punk and Seth Rollins and then got resuspended for refusing to take ownership of his actions at Money in the Bank. This By the way, Drew McIntyre is fully justified there. He just said, Adam Pierce, Pierce, you should be on your hands and knees apologizing to me because, you know, you suspended me. Oh. But what about Punk? Mm. What 
have you done to him for doing what he's done at three big events he, now? He very politely asked Punk not to show up. That's what he did to Punk. And fined him a smaller amount as well. Yeah, but that's for one. That, that was for Glasgow, wasn't it? That was was for, it? No, Money in the Bank. One of the... the, the, the boy, you, you're making a good point here, basically, but Punk's done various things. He's got two freebies and one cost of money. The three big thing he's done yeah. to Drew McIntyre. But so it, I'm, I'm with Drew still. It feeds into the story that Drew feels mm. aggrieved and possibly is justified in feeling that way. Uh, he attacked several referees before Rollins appeared to send Drew packing. Now, this is a strange one because only yesterday on the news we were talking about the likelihood of it maybe being a triple threat with Drew Punk and Seth now that hostilities seem to have been resumed between Seth and Punk as well. But then Dave Meltzer on Wrestling Observer Radio was like, I've heard, I, I thought it would be a triple threat, but I've heard no plans. It looks like it's going to be Drew versus Punk. Could this imply, though, this Drew versus Punk slant, that, uh, sorry, this Drew versus Seth slant, that Punk isn't quite ready to come back yet? Or it could just be hitting at the triple threat that was initially mooted about. We yeah. don't know, do we? No. Well, I guess that's why we've got to tune in next week to find out. Absolutely. One SummerSlam match that does seem closer to happening, and indeed, I, I think has been confirmed now, yeah. um, is Rhea Ripley versus Liv Morgan. Rhea opened Raw and addressed the crowd for the first time since her shock return last week when she almost caught Dom and Liv in the act. Of, of kissing no no just of you know there was they were literally whispering sweet nothings to one another mm. yeah. it was a fantastic moment when her music hit and they both were shocked oh, I thought you meant like. the sweet whisperings were that was a fantastic, fantastic moment, moment yeah. as well yeah really good um, but yeah Dirty Dom last night attempted a reconciliation in very Eddie Guerrero fashion yeah he had black roses instead of red roses because mm. Rhea's a goth I, I don't think know if you knew about this uh, called her Mama Cedar yeah he? oh plenty of times mm. and he, he made the mistake of saying that uh, he wanted to make sure that everyone knew that Rhea belonged to him oh. and eventually Rhea was like I don't belong to anybody up the mother by the way if she is watching mm. like she sometimes does apparently mm. isn't that weird Jack I don't like thinking about uh, it but <laughs> then she's like just no I don't uh, belong to anybody Dom but you belong to me and she gave him the rose back oh dear me Liv Morgan steamy Liv Morgan interrupted on the big screen and said she can now see what Rhea sees in Dom this led to Ripley throwing down the challenge for SummerSlam for the women's world title Liv accepted saying that she won't run and hoped that Dom would be at SummerSlam too to watch her beat Rhea Ripley daddy Rip, Ripley mm. promised to end the Liv Morgan revenge tour and her title reign and her career as well yeah it was good from Liv Morgan as well because mm. she was like this is a different Liv Morgan than the one you knew she looked a bit psychotic when she was sat on her step there mm -hmm. cutting a promo so uh, it, it it probably should be Rhea Ripley coming back and winning just because the storyline has been told but that promo just makes you think that maybe they would give Liv a bit more time with the title yeah there's obviously a couple more weeks left of build so maybe we'll have a better gauge on who's going to win but if I had to just call a snap booking decision you the simplest and I think most effective story is Rhea battering Liv Morgan or Dom turning oh on Rhea. no no it could, that could genuinely happen as well oh this could be a multi-match feud couldn't it and yeah. um, the angle didn't end because throughout the night Dom tried to reconcile with Rhea backstage uh, and also seemingly defended her honor in his view when Jey Uso asked if she was single and ready to mingle yeah led to a match between Jay and Dom where Ray uh, so Ray Dom they look so similar. Uh, Dom, en <laughs> no. Dom ended up in that straddling position again inadvertently. And by this point, I was like, oh, I've seen this one too many times now. But there was a new angle on it. Oh, great. Which angle was it, Jack? No, not a physical camera <laughs> angle. But Rhea sort of dragged him off. Liv ran away. She came out. Uh, and Rhea sort of went to Dom. You concentrate on your match. Get back in the ring. Jay beats Dom. And Rhea's there looking like... Not even good. Just like, oh, of course. Yeah. Of course you've lost, Dom. Yeah. Mm. Mm. And then, and then I saw people speculating, oh, did Rhea fancy a bit of Jay there in the ring? Potentially. You he don't was, know, do you? He was all yeeting and I think doing the call me sign at her. From He's a in very the ring. confident man. When he asked if she was single and ready to mingle, the little <laughs> noise that he does as he leaves the scene. A very confident Kavorka there from Jay Uso. Yes. Uh, I think that the, the summary of this news video mainly is that there's lots of... Triple H is spinning a lot of plates heading into SummerSlam, but at the right pace. Yeah. That's the way it should be. Exactly, aye. Mm, fantastic. Weekly stuff. episodic wrestling. Oh, it's fantastic. Uh, stories where the booker actually remembers what's happened the week before. Yeah. It's all very good stuff. A whole new world. Yes. Uh, well, let, me, let us know what you think in the comments section down below of any of these news stories and tune in later on today for another news video on this very channel and follow Coldaholic.com for all of the updates. Shout out to Aiden, the news hound, <laughs> over on the website. I thought Thank he was an orangutan. A lesser news ape, yeah. Aiden Gibbons. Thank you very much for watching. I've been Jack, this has been Ross, and we'll see you soon.